Hello, and a very warm welcome to Viewpoint, where we try to unlock and unpack the secrets of successful people and to give entrepreneurs all the lessons, the edge, the tools uh, that you can use in your entrepreneurship journey. I'm Jeremy Maggs, and in today's program, we're going to deal with the crucial aspect required in building and managing teams. That is so important as far as success is concerned. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to try to explore all the elements regarding leadership, finding the right people, establishing the right culture. You're going to hear that word culture a lot in this conversation, and also making sure that teams deliver optimum and constant performance. We've got two fascinating guests for you today, and fascinating because they come from very different aspects of leadership, but both know well about building teams. First of all, uh, Matebi Modise from the e-commerce beauty brand retailer Beauty on Tap. And sitting next to her is Joey Monjalo, who is the defensive coach of the 2021 Curry Cup champions Vodacom Blue Bulls. So to both of you, a very warm welcome and let's talk success uh, for the next uh, 20 minutes or so. Matebi, I'm going to start with you. My understanding is uh, Beauty on Tap, it's an e-commerce platform. Yes. What do you think you've done, particularly over the past year or so, to change the retailing dynamic when it comes to, 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 to beauty brands? What have you had to do differently? I think there are two things that we've done differently. Um, obviously, during uh, the pandemic, people have kind of like um, taken an interest in self-care. Um, and so in the past year, we've had to curate products and look for products that are kind of trending, um, what's hot on the market, what people are looking for, particularly skincare. Um, we've kind of seen like a huge interest in, in skincare globally over the past year. A lot of brands have also come to market. And so we, we started to curate the right skincare products um, and put them on one platform where people can, you know, have a wide variety of skincare that they can buy. So we always see like mixed baskets of, you know, high end stuff that is international or even local products. Um, and what we've did differently to a lot of e-commerce stores or even, um, you know, walk-in stores that have an online um, capability is we deliver very fast. So if someone puts in an order before 9 a.m. and they're in Joburg, we'll deliver that day. Joey, a warm welcome to you. You know, when they told me you were coming on board, <laughs> I was interested because uh, you're in the rugby space. This is a program about entrepreneurs, uh, but your expertise is building teams. And that's what entrepreneurs need to understand. Add to that, you're also uh, in the sphere of industrial psychology. So as someone who's involved in the coaching dynamic, how do you go about building teams? Because that is what ultimately successful entrepreneurship is all about. What's your secret? Sure. Um, thanks for having me, first of all, Jeremy, um, and great question. So for me, um, there's three things that I look at, um, just in general in leadership. So the first one I would say that if you're building a team, your leadership structures need to be right um, because that gives direction. Um, by direction, I mean somebody has to align vision, values, and vessels. Um, so in our world, the vessels are the rugby players. So in your recruitment, you've got to get rugby players who then will live and have the characteristics to live by the values that get you to ultimately to your vision. Um, so it's that part, but somebody has to lead that, right? So in the leadership space, which is very close to my heart, is um, I've got a leadership model that I've named Default Play. Um, and all it is, it's an interplay saying, I don't mind whatever your leadership style is, but if you're starting as a leader, there's three things I believe you've got to do really well. Um, the one is that you've got to care. There's got to be a care element. Um, you've got to the ability to create. Um, which is on the basis of competence and consistency. Um, and then the last one is contextualized. So you have to know in what context you are to function effectively and to be relevant in that space. And Joey, all of this finds a path in building something called organizational culture, am I right? 100%. Mm. Um, I, I hear a lot of people speak about culture as this. It's almost like it's, um, we've mystified culture. And all it means is the way we do things here. Mm. So we want to create, when you're building a team, a culture where people feel cared for, 
um, challenged um, to create something and then also to do that in the context, um, in a context relevant way. So Matebi, how have you gone about building a culture? I come from an investment banking background. So I come from a very high performance environment, which has its pros and cons. So the pros are you become super efficient, you understand client centricity, you put the client first, and so you have training in a very high performance environment. The con is you constantly require of your staff members, um, and the care element, as, as Joey said, is very important. And so I've had to kind of balance having a very high performing team, but also be caring, because that's my natural characteristic as well as a person. And I also say that, you know, if the organization succeeds, then we all succeed. Mm -hmm. um, and people kind of carry beauty on tap, like in their hearts, as emotional as it is. Um, but that's the culture that I've kind of um, put in place at beauty on tap and also a caring and nurturing kind of culture. Don't be self-deprecating. Carrying it in your heart is critical, isn't yes. it? Yes. Mm. It's all very well uh, to have the... The vision and, and and the broad understanding of all of this. Yes. So how do you then find the right people to fit the culture that you've both spoken to? Let's start with you. Ooh, I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm constantly looking. Yeah. So I think the one thing I always ask in interviews is, how would you want to grow within this organisation, within five years, what would you want to be doing? Uh, because we interview a lot of people who are into like the beauty and the cosmetics and want free cosmetics to take home. Um, and they kind of fall into the trap where they wooed by the glamour. Um, you show them the door because that's, yeah. I don't show them the door. I try to teach them and say, yeah, no. <laughs> I try, you know, I, 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 I try, you know, to tell them to visualize where they want to be in five years time and say, okay, cool. Um, what are you going to do within the organization to get there? Um, and how can we help you get yeah. there? And so I always hire people who want more for themselves. Um, and those are people who, who just inherently mm. work harder. Um, and that's who I love bringing into the organization. But you can't select people in your sphere on culture alone. They're also got to be selected on performance. Mm. It's a completely different area, isn't it? So for us, um, humble, hungry, and hardworking, mm. Triple H, right? So the, you, you can tell a guy's hunger if he wants to go to the next level or not. You get some certain players who they've reached their standard, they want to stay there, they and don't want to be challenged mm. 100%. Mm. So you'll see the hunger in, in, in somebody's ability to want to go to the next level. Mm. Um, the humility is just the way my disposition towards people. Um, you can see that. So if you're walking to the airport or wherever, you, other people's company, the way I treat my fellow peers is important to us, um, even my fellow people. And then the last one was humble, hungry, and hardworking. I, I still believe to this day that hard work is one of the most underrated things. Um, mm -hmm. We're all finding short ways, you know, so we want to see a little two second YouTube clip to give, give me the, the, the bullet to success. It's, it's not that. I think I literally, if you work hard, that's 90% of success for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hard and smart though. Yes. yes. Mm. I agree on that. But Tebe, let's talk about unique South African cultural markers, if we can. Mm -hmm. Common cause that we live in often a male-dominated patriarchal society. Within the organizational space, how do you factor in, for instance, the importance, the power, the influence of female leadership, black female leadership? That would be something that I imagine uh, would be part of your lived experience. Yeah, and I mean, I, I talk to a whole lot of brands that sit on Beauty on Tap, which are female-led, um, and all have a common problem that it's hard to lead as a female. You know, you have um, men who want to be more dominant in the organization, um, and you kind of have to, have to put your foot down and say, you know, I know this organization, I've built it, so hear me out. Um, and so it's very difficult. I mean, you know, we have drivers, and you want to hire a female driver, but you can't because it's kind of dangerous in the country and they can't be driving around delivering. And so you just have to build yourself up as a female leader, um, show people that you can lead, convince people that you can lead, which is kind of sad. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if you can do it and be genuine and caring and show people that you actually can do it, then the team will follow you. Is it a battle? Yes, it is a battle <laughs> every single day. I mean, I hear a lot of female-led um, or, or ladies with, within our community complaining about the same thing, that leading men is very difficult. 
um, and you just kind of have to put your foot down and, and do it if you can't hire females. All right. So we've spoken about culture. We've spoken about leadership. This is important. But you will get some people who will turn around and say, this is all fluff that you're talking about, <laughs> that ultimately it comes down to performance and high performance. Mm. How do you fight that argument? The pathway towards success is far more important than the success itself mm. because the one is more consistent than the other. Um, the other one is a hit and miss, right? We win and lose a rugby game, we'll keep doing that. But if I know that we won and lost because of A, B and C, then I can build something that's got a long more longevity um, ultimately. So I think it's probably longevity is that I'd put it, mm. is the difference between the two. How do you in your organisation deal with non performer um, I lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I sit down with people and I try to understand, you know, what's going on with you? What is it that's, you know, slowing you down? How can I help you? Um, so I'm somebody who has, you know, personal conversations with people in my organization. Um, and I, I don't want to be people's friend because I think that changes the dynamic completely. Um, but, you know, I care. I think caring as a leader is very important. And so I have those conversations and try to fix it. I'm not somebody who just fires people. I'm somebody who also calls their mom a lot. I call my mom like, oh my gosh, what must I do? Because she's just a very caring person, whereas, you know, I have like a, a short fuse. So um, I also hear other voices and get second opinions to, to solve for people issues. And very different in your world as to how you deal with non-performers, given that in any sports space, um, form ebb and flows. Mm. Um, so I'd almost say back to what Ms. Marisa is saying about care, if you go that acronym again where the C is to create places to commune and communicate, the A is to give attention, the R would be resource, reward and review. Um, so for us is to say, okay, have I given the player the best possible resources for him or her to perform to the best of their ability? Um, and if they have, then I've got to find a way to reward them. So they're going to say, okay, yes, they got intrinsic reward, but I've got to say, hey, I acknowledge that, right? So well done on that. And then the review part Part is if we haven't got it right um, and then we like to speak about if your effort and your attitude is right and you make a mistake we can handle that um, the mistakes that are tough to handle is when we feel like you've been lax in your effort you've been lax in your attitude your attitude I just speak about your your disposition your hunger to get something done if you then lack um, then that review process becomes a tougher process so for us leading the system is to say okay have we given you the right resources um, if you haven't succeeded then it's either the resources weren't right or you might not be the right resource for us um, and it's not it's not a throwaway uh, we believe massively in a growth mindset and to say that not yet so it's you're not there yet Jeremy but we can still get there um, I want to come to the end of this conversation and I'm going to put you both on the spot just a little bit. Don't look too nervous. Okay. Um, you've both listened to each other in a fascinating conversation. Mm. Sport and beauty, uh, they really are yards apart. <laughs> what have you learnt from the sports space in this conversation that you can take back with you? So, um, we were actually saying earlier when we were talking, I was saying it's so interesting that you talk about sports like this and you can apply so much of it to entrepreneurship. So I've heard him using acronyms and that, you know, he has like kind of, um, not templates, but he has fixed... Uh, well, there's a methodology. It's a methodology. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, our culture kind of just flows, right? Because, you know, we're a startup, we're still trying to figure ourselves out. And so I've learned that maybe we should actually have, you know, mission statements and visions and have a lot more structured cultural policies in place. Um, so I've actually learned something today and maybe I can go back to the team and talk about the CARE acronym. And the lesson I guess that you've learned from Atebi is that your team needs to moisturise a lot more. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know, what, what's the... Fine Definitely. <laughs> so if you've got um, soft hands, you can catch the ball. <laughs> By the way, you've just got me a gig to um, consult by her in that space, so thank you very much. Um, <laughs> I'll take my commission. Back. <laughs> but, I mean, what, what have you learned from someone deeply in the private sector here? I just love that they've built something on the back of the community. 
So in our default play model where there's care, create, and contextualize, they, they're completely in the contextualized section. So everything they're doing is relevant um, and it's appropriate. So I'm taking that away to say then if you if I'm one day a head coach of a team, a big team, is to say, okay, what if, and we're based in Pretoria, what are the people of Pretoria saying? And what sort of a brand of rugby do they want to follow? And to listen to that and apply ourselves where possible to meet that need. Because if they could build a business off of that, we can certainly build a team off of that for sure. And to both of you, I thank you for uh, coming onto the program today. Uh, the big lesson that I take out is that it's uh, about developing a culture. It's about understanding leadership, but something which is critical. It's listening. It's having those templates of performance. And most importantly, whether you're in the beauty business or the sports business, it's also about having compassion and empathy. Thank you very much for watching. Mm -hmm.